We have a simple process how to add traction right over your existing concrete. So it's coat day. Um, I'm gonna just bring you up to speed on what they did to, to prep this. Um, all they did was pressure wash it really good, removing any contaminations on the sealer. So now typically most stamped concrete is, has a sealer on it unless it's been worn off, right? And it's completely like dry and matte looking. So you can just dump some water out. If it beads up, pretty high, high chance that you have a sealer, some type of sealer on the concrete. See how it just kind of beads up? Doesn't change the color of the concrete at all, right? It just sits there on the surface. So I know this is a seal that's not allowing that to soak in, right? And then if we come out here, so I know this isn't sealed. And so if I pull water on here, it's, number one, it's gonna darken the concrete because it's not sealed, it's soaking in. And then two, it'll just soak right in. See how it immediately darkens the concrete? Completely different color from this really light gray and then to now it's, and see how it just doesn't sit on the top, it just soaks right in. So a simple way to tell if, if concrete has sealer on it is just pour some water on it. And so this is where our, our prep replacement comes into play. It's specifically designed to bond to sealed surfaces and smooth surfaces. Now that doesn't mean you're gonna get as good of adhesion as if you were diamond grinding or shot blasting, but again, it's really hard to remove sealer off stamped concrete because it's so textured, deep, high, low spots unless you use like a stripper or something like that, it's pretty nasty stuff. So you can always give the customer an option of, hey, we can go over the sealer. Um, the stuff's been tested, it works again, but it's not as, as good of a bond as you're gonna get if you grind it, shot blast it, something like that. But again, they just wanted to save money, get some texture over the stamped concrete because they have a pool right here. Every time kids come over, I guess they're slipping like crazy. They gotta lay mats out, towels down because it's just super slippery and that's one down, one of the downfalls of stamped concrete is it's very slippery when it's wet. It also holds water in all these low spots and it'll start to turn white, right? So you have all these low spots where the water's just sitting in there drying and you get hard water, calcium buildup, and you have all these white spots over your stamped concrete. So it's very hard to maintain. Constantly you have to reseal it, constantly you have to clean it. Now there is other like, like shark grip, stuff like that where you can put in the sealers, but they just wear right off, right? They just wear right off uh, a month right, you, it's gonna be slippery again. So the only way to really, simple way to add texture to help slip resistant, uh, put a slip resistant coating on here is doing the, the process we're gonna show you. And it's a simple spray application. It's very fast and again, we use our prep replacement primer to get the bond, the adhesion that we need. The prep work for this is obviously, if you're doing the prep replacement, you wanna clean it, maybe run a degreaser, scrubber, get it as clean as you can, remove all the contaminations. And again, just take your time. If you're using a pressure washer wand, you wanna hold it like really close to the concrete. Again, you wanna clean this as good as you can. They should have did like a brown, a brown polyurethane caulking or something in here to match it, right? And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna tape this off with our filament tape, and we'll show you that when we do it. We're gonna shoot, finish shooting, right? Put our texture coat down on it, and then we're gonna pull that up and then tape on the outside edges, and we're gonna put a, a brown colored polyurethane caulking on here. Um, and that'll just make it look a lot cleaner. Next thing is plastic, right? We're shooting out of a hopper gun. It has a wide spray pattern. And so you can see we have like four and a half feet up the walls, right? They're plasticking off the concrete out here. Take the time, plastic everything off, right? We've done it to where we've held cardboard a bunch and you're always gonna get crap in places if you're trying to hold cardboard because you have to move quickly with the texture machine gun. You can't just sit in one spot. You're just gonna shoot too much out. And so take the time, plastic everything off. We've done it before with cardboard. It's a pain in the butt. You get too much stuff on the cardboard. Now it's dripping down and leaking everywhere that you're moving it. Good example of stuff you're not gonna learn in a training. Everything they've taped, is all the way to the floor. So what's gonna happen is, it's gonna be a pain in the butt. We're gonna have to cut all this stuff out, which we're gonna leave it, because I want you guys to see what it takes to remove all this tape after we shoot it. So if I was taping this, I would tape on the top edge, right? You can kind of see, see the edge right here. I would tape on the top here. And then when we go to pull it, you have a nice clean line. Tape pulls easy, it's not ripping and tearing. We don't have to cut it all out. And so we'll see how it goes, but Typically, if you tape to the floor like this, we're gonna have to come back, cut it out, and then peel the tape with the razor blade, cut through the overlay. 
um, it can it can add a lot of extra work when when you're taping all the way to the floor obviously this is where it's off the concrete so they just tape to the bottom here so we're not going to have an issue there right uh, another thing we're also shooting back here right and so we have to tape off all these posts okay and then notice the rocks are moved away from the pad. If the rocks were right next to the pad, we're gonna wind up getting overlay on those. And so what we're gonna do is just lay cardboard down on this side. It's really hard to obviously plastic and keep plastic down on rocks. So we're just gonna have cardboard laid out here. We'll come by, we'll shoot this, pull the cardboard up. And then obviously we wanna blow it too, right? We're gonna blow this off because we did plastic tape and mask it yesterday. So we'll wind up blowing everything off right before we start. And then we can head around front, right? Pillars are taped, masks, walls. Got plastic out here on the concrete. So yeah, we're just, we're gonna film this raw for you guys. Here's talking. I think Kyle's gonna start taping off. We're gonna tape one edge and then we'll tape the other edge, right? And then if we have to run one down the middle to fill it, we'll do that. Could you use masking tape or painter's tape? Yeah, but it's probably gonna be a pain in the butt to peel that because again, we're gonna be shooting overlay over this. It does get hard. Filament tape's awesome because it has the fibers in it. It's not gonna tear. We'll be able to just pop it out really quick. You guys get the idea, right? Real simple, spray it, roll it, make sure you're getting in all the low spots, take the time. If you wanna get a bigger nap, have it on hand, maybe try that, but again, if you're using that bigger nap, like three quarter inch, you wanna make sure you roll it out better. We don't wanna put it on too thick. Once we're done, we're gonna throw these fans on. You can see back there, right? No fans have been on, a little airflow. It's already ready to coat. So what you need when you're doing this is you need a guy, you know, able to move the machine because when we're doing larger projects, right, this is going to have to move, the hose is going to have to move. I need to constantly be able to spray without letting go of the trigger. Once you let go of the trigger, the pressure is going to build up. It's going to shoot out faster right off the bat. And so if you do have to stop, it's good to have a bucket to spray it into and then jump right onto the, the pad and spray it immediately. Don't let it sit there for a minute without the trigger pulled. It's gonna build up a bunch of pressure. It's gonna shoot out a blob right off the bat. So I'm gonna turn this on. Again, since we ran water, water's gonna, little water is gonna come out. So you never wanna turn it on and just start shooting. Always test spray it. Make sure you like the pattern. Okay, turning it on. Well, that's about what I'm looking for, right? We want those, those medium to large puddles. Some spots will be a little bigger, but again, we don't have a bunch of overspray. It's not shooting out with high pressure. Now, if you're doing bigger jobs, 
right? You could add a little pressure to make it shoot out more and move faster. But again, if it's your first time, I'd probably start out with less pressure that we have more time to move, stuff like that. So again, since we stopped it, I'm gonna bring the bucket in there, shoot in the bucket. If everything's good, I'm gonna start, start shooting the pad. The overlay is all dry, um, and what we've decided to do is just paint the caulking that's in the joints already with our black uh, primer, our black WB primer. Um, it's gonna bond to it just fine, um, because even like the stone here, the stone is like a dark grout, right? And then obviously when we seal this, it's gonna darken up, and then we'll have these, these black lines. It's gonna look a lot better than doing um, this gray, right? The gray just doesn't look like it matches with these colors. We, we figured that in the beginning. And then if we did a, a brown to match, um, it's, I don't think it'll look as cool because it'll just be like one solid color. So we're gonna do black to kind of highlight, accent these lines. 